Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. I think now more than ever, it's so important to cultivate serious, long-lasting, and fruitful relationships in our businesses. I mean, there are so many excuses to disengage, to basically disconnect, and to escape and mindfully go through our business and life by following routine. And I think a great way to rediscover your passion is to go back to why you're doing this, who you're trying to serve, and create relationships with those people. I don't know about you, but every time I kind of feel down in the dumps in my business, as soon as I talk to a client, as soon as I see their face, as soon as I see the impact, as soon as I connect with a colleague, it rejuvenates me and re-energizes me. And I hope you feel the same. And speaking of regenerating and re-energizing from talking to colleagues, I've got a fantastic guest on the show today. So I'd like to welcome to the show, Barb Betts. Barb is a sought after keynote speaker. She's a seasoned real estate expert with over 20 years of experience. She's a passionate educator and the CEO of RE Collective, which is a thriving boutique brokerage in Southern California. Whether she's teaching on social media or real estate by relationship, she brings an honest, compassionate, and transparent approach to every single stage she's on. Through her signature course, Real Estate by Relationship, Barb dedicates her educational platform to building businesses on the exact systems, processes, and knowledge that's necessary to succeed in any market. I love that Barb is so passionate about relationships and authenticity. We're going to be talking about all of that today on the episode. This is not just about a mindset, guys. This is about real, honest ways to cultivate relationships in an authentic way that doesn't feel super salesy, that doesn't feel, you know, fake or fabricated. You're going to learn a lot in today's episode on not just the why, but the strategies on how you can actually build relationships in your business. Let's hear from Barb. Hey, Barb, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Shannon. So excited to be here. Same. Could you just say hello to everyone listening and introduce yourself? I would love to say hello. Hello, everyone. My name's Barb. I am in Southern California, and I have a passion for helping business owners and entrepreneurs grow their revenue by leveraging relationships. And it's a huge passion project of mine as I've built my entire real estate career that way. And now I am just loving talking to people about the power of authenticity and how it can show up in their life to help them really do whatever they want to do in life. I love that. And I'm an advocate for that as well. Relationships are what built my business. And I think it makes the world go round. I think without solid relationships, you're building on unsturdy ground. Agreed. Thousand percent. So what got you into this topic? Like what made you so passionate about this? Like, was it something you experienced, observed, anything in particular that led you down to have such a great passion for authenticity in business? So my entire real estate career, 20 year career has been built on relationships. So I've always understood the power of relationships. I was the girl that was taught to door knock and got chased by a dog and went back to the office and was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. And then I thought, you know what, what if I go to the people that already know me and like me and give them a reason to trust me? So that's how I built my entire real estate career. And it allowed me this foundation to be this mom and this wife and this friend and have this balance in life because I wasn't chasing the traditional leads that most real estate agents have to. And then what propelled is in the past couple of years, I have a very personal story about hair loss. And I have suffered from hair loss my entire adult life. And it has progressed through various different levels. I suffer from alopecia. I have a thyroid condition. I have genetic hair loss in my family. And in my late 30s, it... I couldn't stop it. And I tried every medical product possible. I tried every procedure. I had consultations with hair transplant surgeons. I wore a powder in my hair that covered it up for years. And I hid behind that. I hid behind that hair loss story because I was so ashamed of it. It really caused me internal sadness and pain. And I always thought to myself, like, 
why aren't other women like me? Like, why does everyone else have hair and I don't? And so I finally got to a point where the writing was on the wall for what my outcome really was probably going to be. I'm almost bald on the front of my head. Fun fact, most women lose their hair over the top and middle of their head, not around the back. And I decided to explore other alternatives. So I explored human hair alternatives and I discovered a company right in my backyard in Newport Beach, one of the top hair companies in the world. And I went down there and I had a consultation about what my options were. And I really thought I was going for what we call a topper, which is full length extensions that clip onto the top of your head and just cover that, that bald spots. And I'll never forget the day the consultant walked in and said, Barb, you're this isn't going to work for you. You don't have enough bio hair on top of your head for it to clip into. And I remember feeling crushed. And she was like, I really think you should try wigs. And I was like, you're out of your mind. You have lost your mind. I am 40 years old. I am too young to wear wigs. Wigs look fake, all the, all the things. And my 20-year-old daughter at the time was sitting next to me and she's like, mom, I really think you should try a wig. And I was like, you're crazy too. And she said, mom, do you know how many women wear full length extensions. She's like, you just need help in a different area. And so at that moment, my life changed and I agreed to try on the wig and it was life changing in that moment. And I ordered my first piece and I came home and I told my family, my daughter and my son and my husband. And I was like, listen, I'm going to be real about this on social media. Like I have a huge following in the real estate community in the business community. I'm going to be real. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hide behind this. I'm going to be authentic about this because I knew that was the only way I knew how to show up. And so I did. I went public. (laughs) I came out of the closet. I put this hair on my head and I talked about it. And now two years later, I share my journey with women. I share my journey with everyone and anyone that will listen about the power of this showing up as who you really are and showing up our vulnerable side. And what I learned through all this, Shannon, is that People tell me all the time, you're so much more confident now. And I always tell them, I am not more confident. I didn't just put this hair on my head and become confident overnight. I let down the walls and the guards that were holding me up and I decided to just be me. And once you decide to authentically just be you, the world opens up. And it's it's been an exciting, crazy, never thought in a million years, my life would change the way it has just from wearing wigs and being very happy and passionate about it and share it with the world. Now, what would you say to those who say like, you know, authenticity, transparency, do you see a difference between those different words and how do you define authenticity and distinguish it from say the, the, the term transparency? That is a really great question. I would say authenticity is being who you really are, right? I, say all the time in in my relationship keynote, I tell the audience that I was a professional people pleaser. I used to be a professional people pleaser. I could have had a degree in it because I would never tell people what I really thought, how I really felt, or that I didn't agree with what they were saying. I would never tell them that I disagreed. I just wouldn't tell them that I don't think what they're saying is correct or that I want to be on their, their thought team with that. And instead I would just not say anything. Well, the, isn't it kind of like if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Remember when we were talking about Right. Exactly. Yeah. But by, by being agreeable all the time, you are pleasing the person that's saying it. Right. Instead of giving them another perspective, it doesn't mean you have to be a, you know what about it. So authenticity to me is being who you really are saying how you feel If you love to wear a certain color, wear it. If you love to drive a certain car, drive it and don't be worried about what people think about what you're doing. That's showing up authentically and you're not doing something to please others. But I think the transparency that you said, a lot of people do live authentically, but not transparently. They don't tell people what they're feeling and thinking, right? They hold it in. And so I do think there's a difference, but I think they also run hands in hand. I'm very authentic and I am very transparent. Yeah. Do you think someone can be too authentic? I think that there is a space for having a personal life. And people tell me all the time, Barb, you, cause I, I love social media and I spend a lot of time on social media and I spend a lot of time in stories and people tell me that I 
don't hide anything. And I'm like, you just don't think I hide anything. Yeah. You Meaning I share everything. I don't hide anything, but you think I share everything. And the reality is I don't because there's a difference between being personal and being private. Mm. So I am very personal. You know, a lot of things about me. I share my day. I share the highlights. I share the lowlights, but privately, you don't know things going on in my home. If I'm going through a challenging time, for instance, the best example I can use is my son was a professional baseball player for eight years and he retired this last October. Well, in July, he started talking to us as a family about how he thought he was going to retire. And it was a big emotional thing for our entire family. Our life has been consumed by his baseball career since he was a tiny guy. Everyone knew on social media, I was having some rough days. People knew I wasn't the happy peppy Barb all the time, but nobody knew that my son was considering retiring from baseball because that's private. If I had dialogued all that, that would have been inappropriate. You're absolutely correct. That would have been too much. That had no business being out in the space till he was ready to tell that story. So I think you can be personal and you can talk about what's going on, but you don't have to share every bloody detail with every human you meet. Yeah. Cause I see people treat this in extremes, right? They think when they say be authentic, it's like share everything. It's like, no, there's an extreme to that. No. There's a spectrum of authenticity and transparency yes. is what I would call it yes. where you're completely airing out everything with no filter. I go, there, there can be a filter and you can still be authentic in the terms of that you just yes. mentioned, which I thought was, was brilliant, which is privacy versus personal. Yes. Yeah. And once you learn to master it, because here's, here's the thing, people want to do business with humans. And yeah. if you don't show up that you are a real person and you are more than whatever you do. So if we're talking to entrepreneurs and we're talking to business owners, you are more than a CPA, right? There's more to Shannon than being a CPA. There is more to a financial advisor. There is more to a hairstylist. There's definitely more to a real estate agent. And so who is that other person? Who is the other part of you that is not doing your job every day? That's letting people into your personal life that you love. I love red wine. I love country music. I love baseball, right? I love those things. I love Starbucks. People know those things about me. That's all personal, but I'm not going to tell someone about the conversation I had with a friend over a glass of wine. Right. They're just going to know the glass of wine I was drinking. <laughs> They're going to get a picture of the wine, not the conversation. They're going to get a picture of the wine. They're going to know what kind it was, but they are not going to hear about the conversation that happened over dinner. That's Perfect. private. That's a great example. So why do you think that applying these concepts is so important for business owners right now? It's, it's, it's everything because you are more than what you do, right? People are hiring you for what you do. They are absolutely hiring you because you are good at what you do. So I like to talk about the no like, and trust factor, right? People will not do business with you until they know you, like you, and trust you. Everyone knows that. We talk about it all the time. The problem is people miss the gap between know and like, and trust. And they think because people know you and like you, they'll trust you. So there's two groups of people. There's people out there who are like, well, I'm a cool person and I'm nice and they're friends with me, so they should do business with me. Well, no, you haven't given them a reason to trust you. And then there's the people who are really good at what they do. They're the best at what they do, but people don't do business with them because they don't know them. They haven't given them a reason to like them. And so their business owners have to understand that the real secret is in getting people to know you like you, like things about you, find connection points with you, build a relationship with you. And once you have a relationship and you've proven you're good at what you do, then the trust factor comes in. Right. And I feel like the trust, again, you can't build trust quickly, in my opinion. No. That is a developed relationship. Trust is earned. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. Yeah. And that's where my passion for referrals comes in, right? That's where my passion for, okay, Someone isn't going to trust you right away. But if I get referred to Shannon from my best friend who I trust, she has now transferred her trust in Shannon to me. And I can develop the trust with Shannon more quickly. I don't have to know as much about you than if I just found you on the internet. Right. But it's leveraged trust. So it's also, exactly. it's trust, but it's also, let's say your friend recommended me. That was a function of me building trust with them. Exactly. And then I leverage their trust and so do you to exactly. develop further relationships. Yep. And yep. that just, but that goes to show the importance of relationships, but not just 
when you say relationships too, it's not just networking, meeting people, adding Ugh. to the Rolodex, which no one knows what yes. that is anymore, but the, <laughs> adding to a Rolodex, <laughs> it's about it, but it's, it's more than the connection and the yeah. surface level. I want to dig into mm-hmm. that for a second is like oh. how to cultivate stronger relationships and what that means for you. When you say relationships were everything, let's talk about maybe a story on how a relationship really drove a, a pivot or a change or a development in your business or your life and why it wasn't just simply, oh, well, I had their phone number. It's not like yeah. that level. Everything I've ever done in my career has been built off of what you just said. Right. It is not just meeting someone at a conference one time, getting their name, getting their business card, which is tells you nothing about somebody, putting them into my phone or into my database, and then pulling up their information and giving it to you. I'm going to not only give you the information, but I'm going to tell you where they live, what their favorite things are, if they have kids, if they have dogs, like what they specialize in. I know things about people because one thing that I have done at a very high level since the day I started in business is actually asking questions and learning about people and then capturing that information and leveraging it in a way that allows me to continue the conversations, right? So you and I meet at an event and we have a conversation in the bar over a glass of wine. You can tell I really love wine or coffee. And you start telling me about your kids and your family and things about you. I'm going to note all of that into my own, what I call my, you know, relationship management system. And I'm going to remember all that information. And so the next time I know I'm going to meet you, I'm going to have the relationship, know the questions to ask, right? you have to understand that you can't just meet someone, know what they do, throw it into a database and then expect that Shannon's going to remember me and I'm going to remember Shannon. You have to work at that relationship. You have to create some kind of follow-up system, right? You have to understand that you know how to check back in. You know how to follow Shannon and follow her journey, follow her on social media, get to know what she's doing in her daily life, comment and engage. Social media for me has been the biggest propeller of this relationship growth in a digital world. Cause I do meet people all across the United States. And so when you have a way to l- glimpse into their life and then use that as a catapult for conversation, then you can really start to shine in each other's lives. We talked about it earlier with, you know, this group that we're both a part of, you meet these people, you meet them at an event, you meet them in Facebook. And then all of a sudden you start following each other and then you start texting each other. And then all of a sudden, the second someone needs something that one of us can provide, you think of them because you've built a relationship. It all exactly. starts with the foundation of relationships, all of it. Yeah. And it all starts with awareness that you exist, which is the no. Exactly. And no. that's yep. that's a huge thing too that I think people underappreciate. That you could be the best in the world at what you do, but if no one knows about you, it doesn't matter. It, it It's so important, especially right now. And there's so much noise out there. There's so many people trying to promote themselves, right? You got to keep up. And people got to know who the hell you are and what you stand for, Mm -hmm. not just that you exist, but also what you do for them. And what you just said about relationships is so key because that is exactly why. And and you may not know this about my business, right? But we do fractional CFO services and I want no more than 12 clients. And everyone in my industry looks at me like, what? Are you crazy? (laughs) Like the average, understand the average accounting firm guys has 900 clients. Oh my gosh. On an average basis. And that includes any number of workers, by the way. So that includes the sole practitioners in the mix with that. 900 is the average. So if you think about it, somebody's doing, you know, three to 400 tax returns in a season, potentially. How much are they really going to remember about you? This is why it, it's, it's all systematic. And I said, I like that is exactly why I left the profession. I said, it's not a relate like this should be a relationship play because we're seeing them financially naked. Like mm-hmm. this should be a trust based business. And I feel like with that volume, you can't have the relationship that require is required in order to deliver that service to them in a, in a way and in integrity. Mm-hmm. So I said enough, I'm going to have 12 clients. I have a list of them on an index card by my desk. And I go, if I can't think about each one of my clients every single day, I have too many clients. Mm. If I, I can't, that. if I can't even remember, if I can't remember their kids' names or their dogs' names, I have too many clients and, or I need more people. Right. But there's also, but there's a function of like, I, ha- I measure that based on how well do I really know them and, mm-hmm. and how integrated am I in their business? But, and that becomes high value. I think if you can leverage strong relationships, it does cultivate value. Cause I could be 
a mediocre, I don't claim to be, I could be a <laughs> mediocre CFO. I could be a mediocre, like half ass C minus CFO. But if I can do that, people find value in it. So I, I really think relationship is a hidden source of value. You know, what's crazy is in real estate, we talk about this all the time. I mean, this kind of is like when you hear someone be like, oh, let's talk about relationship and referral. People go, oh, oh okay. I've yeah. heard it before. I've heard it a million times. Right. What I've realized through my work and through my passion to take this and expand this into other industries and help other business owners and entrepreneurs understand the beauty of doing business by relationship and understanding and deepening relationships and then leveraging them is that they don't know how to do it. And here I am thinking everyone knows how to do it and everyone's tired of hearing about this. And then all of a sudden I start talking to many BBG members and other people in other industries and they're like, okay, well, what's the, what, what's the first thing that I do? I'm like, what do you mean? What's the first thing you do? They're like, well, how, how do I build this relationship? And in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, people do not know how to build relationships. Exactly. And I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, how's that possible? But then I realize because so many entrepreneurs are taught to go after the next lead, go after the next transaction, go after the next customer. And yes, every salesperson has to do lead generation. But what if you just took the people who already know you and like you, give them a reason to trust you, or if they already trust you, now start leveraging that. Now start going to them and saying, I have a philosophy, Shannon, it's not about getting someone to buy from you or sign a contract with you. That is not what it's about. I am never about you doing business directly with me. I'm about you knowing what my superpowers are you knowing how good I am at what you do, what I do, and then you sharing me with others that need me. I'm, that's what I'm, my foundational principle is all about. It's selling through someone, not to them. Because people tell me all the time, I don't want, I don't want to go to my friends because I don't want to be a cheesy or sleazy salesperson. Well, good. Don't be one. Don't go to them and ask them for business. No. Make sure they know what you do. Make sure they know you're good at it. And then ask them, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? When you come across someone, insert what you do and then use the magic words. Can you introduce me to them or connect me to them? My other secret is I'm giving away all my secrets. Never ask for a referral. Don't use that word. That is what it is, but stop using the word. Ask someone to help you out, to do you a favor. And I promise you, if they really like you, which they probably do, they want to help you. And that's, that's the magic. That's right. the magic. But all of it is because you had a relationship first. Why do you think it's so hard for people to, to put that into action, to actually go and, and, you know, go through their phone and go, who do I know who I can ask this to? Why do you think it's so hard for folks to adopt that type of behavior that you just mentioned? Because it is so simple and yet not being done. Mindset. It's okay. all mindset because it's the mindset of you've been trained that you're a salesperson. And then we, we hear out there that salespeople are bad. It's true, right? I mean, the first time I met with the financial advisor that I no longer use, he slid a paper in front of me and was like, write down three people, you know, give me their name and phone number. Excuse me. You don't even know me yet. You did not earn the right to ask that of me. I think it's two things. It's one, you haven't made enough. I have a big mindset of deposits and withdrawals. You have to make enough deposits in someone's life before you can make a withdrawal. I you've agree. got to have that trust in their life. You've got to have served them at a deep level, shown them that you care, done something for them, been a resource for them before you have permission to take a withdrawal. Once you've made enough deposits, you can make a withdrawal. So it's twofold. You need to have enough in the trust account, and then you need to have the courage to understand that you are not asking them for business. You're asking them for introductions and connections to people that you can then go build another relationship with that needs you or that you can show up who need the financial education you do, who need the nutrition advice you give. And then when they're ready to actually lose the weight or they're ready to invest the money, you're going to have that mind share that you need in order for them to do business with you. Yeah. And I think it's really important to not make deposits in just solely anticipation of the withdrawal. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There is you no, do I do that. not have a scorecard of like, okay, I need to make two more deposits with Shannon before I can <laughs> ask her. Okay. Check, check, check. Now I can call and ask. You are absolutely correct. It becomes, it that's, that's the authenticity part where you have to authentically yeah. give a shit. 
Yes. Like you actually have to give a shit about the person and their well-being and the betterment of their conditions. Like you I, have I've, to actually be interested in it. I have said my entire career, the key to working relationally is that you care about the relationship more than the transaction. Agreed. You care about the relationship more than the paycheck. And there are many ways I teach to do that, but it has to start with your heart. You have to check yourself. Because if you have a bunch of relationships that you're just looking at as a transaction or a future check or a future paycheck, commission check, however you get paid, then those aren't authentic relationships. All of my relationships are relationships. And then as a side note, they know I'm really good at what I do. But the it first and foremost is I care more about their families and their kids and their lives. And I've had people tell me, Barb, I don't really care about people. I'm like, well, yes, you do. You're human. You actually do. You yeah. just are so driven for your business and whatever you do. You're not looking at how you actually can show up as a human, as a right. person. So, I mean, case in point, accountants, like we, <laughs> right? like we, do you really like, do you guys really think we love filling out tax paperwork all day? Some people do. Some people do. They're a special breed, yeah. but like most of us are doing it for the bigger purpose, the bigger impact, the bigger, like we want to help business owners succeed. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. But this is our way of doing it. It's just so important to actually be in touch with that. And a, another great case study example of this I've seen, I'm assuming you're familiar with Alex Hormozzi. Yes. Okay. So my favorite thing about him is like coming out and saying, I have nothing to sell you. I literally don't care if you buy anything from me. I'm not here to try to get you to transact with me. I want you literally to consume my content, learn and develop a relationship with my content. So later down the line, maybe we'll work together. Maybe we won't, but like I'm doing a service to humanity because I'm passionate about it. And I think he's a killer example because he's so damn popular now. I go, that is an example of, and same thing with Gary Vaynerchuk too. It's like, I'm just yep. going to go out and show up out of my own passion to show up and help people. And mm -hmm. I'll make mine when the time comes. I have no doubt, but like mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's putting that for, that foot forward first. Mm -hmm. a well, absolutely. And you mentioned CPAs and you mentioned like accountants, like I'm yeah. 900 clients and all the things. And yeah. I totally agree with you. But one way, like, so all my business owners that I work with, obviously for my own personal business have all learned this from me because I've done it to them, right? I do it to them. And it sounds like I'm Houdini or something. I'm not, but they've seen the results of how I make them feel. And then they start doing it to me or they start noticing. And so my CPA is a perfect example. Talked to her the other day. She called me. And what's the first thing she said to me? The first thing she said to me is, oh my gosh, I saw Mandy start a grad school. How's it going? Exactly. That is all this is, is noticing things that are going on in someone's life. And social media, like I, I mentioned before, is one of the biggest, if you're active on it, be friends with your clients, be friends with your sphere, be friends with everybody. Because the magic is, what did Kathleen do? She probably opened up my Facebook before she called me and remembered, oh yeah, Mandy started grad school. And that's the first thing she started with. She started with the relationship. She started with Barb. She started with my family before we ever got into what we needed to talk about financially. Right. That's all you have to do as a business owner. It's not that difficult. And it puts you in tune with their goals. So like, it's not just for the sake of, you know, the touchy feely stuff. Like this isn't an item on a checklist guys that where it's like, oh, I need no. to go make sure I'm doing the relationship thing. <laughs> this serves you, even if you are doing it in the interest of business, it serves you so much to be in touch with what's going on in their lives and to establish what their goals are. Because at least yes. for us, right in our profession, it's, you know, I can say all day that like a tax strategy doesn't or makes sense for you. It's going to save you X amount of dollars. But like, what if that's not the goal? Like, what if the goal is actually just to work yep. less hours? Yep. And in order to take advantage of this strategy, you actually have to work more hours. I'm mm -hmm. like, that goes against the goal. Even if it's, even if it's a money saver, it goes against the goal. Yep. Like what tide are we swimming down? Because yep. it's so important to be in tune with that and know like, is my client planning on purchasing a home, right? That's yep. a factor in like how much work we're going to have to do, how we'll have to support them. You know, the types of, of goals we're going to have to set for that. You have yep. to be working with your clients holistically to understand who they are and why they're with you. Like, what are they looking to get out of your relationship? And how you can best serve them. It's not just some cookie cutter thing that you can offer them. 
No, it's it's when you when you take the whole person into account and and you said it so beautifully, when you understand what their goals are, when you understand the path that they're on, you understand how other factors going on in their life or things they like you in the financial world, you may know one of your clients is doing something in their personal life and you're like, wait, 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 wait. Let's either leverage that, let's figure that out, let's make that a benefit, or don't do that, or make sure they're doing it in the right way as a tax strategy, there's so many things you can notice just from knowing your clients, which is why I went back to my relationship management system, which I'm very passionate about because you are human, Shannon. You're not going to remember everybody's dog's name just because they're your client. Like you sometimes need to refresh your memory a little bit, right? So it is, it's capturing the details. It's understanding who people are and it's then really showing up in their lives as Shannon, not just Shannon, the CPA. Exactly. People actually, this, this was what reminded me of in the conversation was um, a lot of people will say, I want to work with you. What is, what is it you do? And they start with, I want to work with you. And then they have to ask me, so what do you do? And that's exactly the order of questions I like. That's the order of questions you want to have is not Googling. I need a CPA and Shannon comes up. I am side note. I am the least enthusiastic about working with people who Googled CPA and I showed up and it does happen because we have decent decent SEO, but I'm like, but you know, you Googled, you just Googled CPA and took whatever, like maybe I looked different or my photo was different or I had a nice color you liked or whatever. And that's what we're starting the relationship with. So I have to make sure that there's something deeper than that. There's another connection there because versus somebody who comes in and is like, I've been listening to your podcast for a year and a half and I'm ready to do something with you and work with you. I'm like, cool. You already know what I stand for. You already know who I am. This is, it's so much better for your relationship, not just to bring in good leads, but to actually cultivate good clients that get you. You are speaking my, my, my heart because I'll (laughs) tell you right now, I've dealt with thousands of clients in my career and the ones that come via a relationship who already know something about me, who are already attracted to working with me are a dream to work with. The ones that we call in our world, internet leads are typically not good people to work with and not fun to work with. And what you just said is so true because if someone comes to you because they are really compelled to work with you, you are going to have such a better experience as the practitioner than someone that just found you online or because you knocked on their door or because you cold called them. That's not going to be a foundational relationship or typically going to be someone you enjoy doing business with. When it comes via referral or via introduction, whatever you want to call it, attraction, then you are working with people who are really interested and will listen to you. And it makes that onboarding and that, right? As a CPA, you got to really believe what you're saying. I got to be bought into what you're saying because quite frankly, some days I have a love-hate relationship with mine, right? I mean, who doesn't have a love-hate yeah. relationship with their CPAs? Oh, CPA and same, with, same with the clients. Don't get me Especially wrong. around <laughs> April. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially around April, right? I talked to her in like September. I'm usually okay, but April's not so good. But because the foundation of a relationship is there, we can get through all those times. And I trust her. And I don't fight back on what she tells me. And I don't fight back on what she asks me to do. I trust her. Exactly. And that's exa- exactly the thing is that I think that people like, and this goes for coaches, any service provider, anyone who's listening, right? That your client, if, if your clients are not listening to what you're telling them to do, let's say you're in the, in the profession of advisor or you're in that, that seat of advisor to them and they're not listening, they're not taking action, they're not doing what you say. It's a question of, have I built their trust? Mm-hmm. Do they actually trust me to give them the right guidance? And whenever, and we're getting into like all my core values here too, which is like, these are all articulated in my right. core values, which is like, we are part of the team and that we, you know, if you don't trust the advice we're giving you, like one of my favorite sayings is you don't have to take my advice, but you are paying for it. <laughs> so if I you're not, it. if you're not taking it, I'll be glad to stop giving it. Yeah. Because it, I can give it to someone who's going to take it. And, and that's a very strong opinion I have in that if you're working with someone who isn't following through on what they're saying or they're, they're just not showing up and not taking action, it's like, well, it could be, do they actually trust you to have their best interests in mind? And that's a hard thing to contemplate, but it's also a really good reality to set in and go, you know what? Have I really earned all of that trust to be able to tell them what to do and have them listen to me? Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Absolutely. I when when I teach this to business owners, and I always say, you know, if a if a if a past client leaves you and doesn't use you again, if they cancel their contract with you, whatever, you have to do that checkup from the neck up. You have to look back at all of your activity with them and all of your engagement with them, and did you really earn the right to keep that relationship? Mm. Did you show up the way you should have in your world? Right, trust, but it's also did you show up? Yeah, right. Or did they feel compelled to go somewhere else because of another relationship and you didn't? Because, you know, when the recession, when we talk about recession, I always tell people relationships are recession proof, right? Because no matter what market I have served in, in the real estate space, my relationships have sustained and carried us through because I've owned them. I've nurtured them. I've kept on top of them. And whether it's a good market, a bad market, a slow market, a foreclosure market, a short, I've served in them all. The relationships I have sustain us because they're relationships. If you, but if I didn't do something to nurture and earn those relationships of clients who I've had my entire career, 17, 18, 19 years ago, they did their first transaction with us. They continue to do transactions with us and send us to all their friends and family. Why? People only transact real estate. It used to be once every seven to eight years. Now it's more like 16 to 17 is the new stat coming out, which is crazy. But if I didn't do something to earn that relationship and keep that relationship, I would have no right to say, well, I'm going to sell your house 10 years from now, but my clients stay around. And the ones that leave, I do have to say, you know what? I blew that one. I didn't deepen that relationship. I didn't keep that relationship up. So I do, you know, there's, there is absolute exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, you're saying the same thing. The foundations in business are when people don't use you, leave you, it's truly because relationship or trust. One of those things has broken down. Yep. And it's not even a bad thing. No, it's just, sometimes it's, it's, it's just okay. a fact. And it's like, there's no blame or there's, there's ownership, but no blame in terms of, well, that went sideways and that didn't, I'm like, you know what, maybe you weren't pouring into it because you knew you weren't really in it anymore. And they made the decision that you were going to make eventually anyway, or that you were afraid to make. And agreed. And it's, it's so, like a breakup. It's like any other maybe. relationship. It's just, you know, it, it's meant to be the way it turns out. Usually it's someone where I'm like, yeah, I probably didn't because I teach business owners, you, you connect and you systematize how often you connect with people by the level of relationship you have with them. And typically the people that have handful over the years drifted away from us, they were a low level of relationship. They were never my top people. Yeah. They weren't the fully supported tier. I've seen that in business so many times with customers, even companies I've worked for, they're like a, you know, A, B or C customer. And it, I call it in my in my phrasing, it's first class comfort plus and economy to Girl, follow you're Delta. Talking my language. So I'm you're like, my language. but here's another thing that I always, the, the relationship can also be a function of how you treat others in your client roster. So if I always tell this to, to other CPAs and business owners who have trouble with their pricing, cause they want to do everything for everybody and they don't have, they have a capacity constraint, right? Yep. Yep. I say, how pissed would you be? If you paid for a first class ticket, but the first thing that the the flight attendant did was go back to row 22 and see if they wanted champagne. <laughs> How pissed I would you be you. if you could I see it? You. Yep. Yep. And I go, imagine you're always on the plane and they can always see you. Yep. Who are you serving first? Who gets your energy mm-hmm. first? Mm-hmm. And it's it sounds because people will not enroll in this idea if you're saying no. it like treat these people better. It's like, I don't want to create a class system. And I go, no, it's not, but it's a purchasing tier. And if you purchase tickets in the front row of a concert or backstage passes, you would be mad if somebody who spent $25 for the nosebleed seats somehow was standing next to you backstage. Because you'd be like, wait, I earned this. I paid for this. I exchanged the value for this service, but Mm -hmm. you're just giving it away to anybody. It completely devalues what you're trying to do when you make Mm -hmm. those exceptions. And where I'm getting at is like that builds relationship to show trust that they can trust you, that they are exclusive. They are getting something special because you are excluding other people from the offer. And it's an interesting concept because people somehow have a hard time with this. Do you find the same thing? Oh, you have no idea. So I, I tell, I tell my, my agents all the time, I'm like, not everyone gets invited to all the parties. I do a lot of client parties and events, and some of them are very high dollar events. I, cannot invite everybody. If I invite everybody, I'm watering down my entire client experience. 
Yep. Completely. And in other businesses, you know, in real estate, we have to be very careful because of all of our rules and our laws with RESPA and everything else. We have a lot of those rules. However, a lot of businesses don't. And what you're saying, and especially when you're offering services, yep. like in real estate, we have to offer equal service to everybody. However, in other businesses, you can have exclusive memberships, tiers, client services, full service, medium service, low service. You can have, you get Shannon or someone else gets your assistant. That's okay. That is absolutely okay. You have to understand that everyone has a different level of relationship with you and you either have to engage and connect or or transact differently with them or everyone's going to think they're the same and then nobody has any value. Like it exactly. waters down everything. So I thousand percent agree with you. I love that. So Barb, as we're kind of wrapping this up here, can you tell folks where they can hear more from you, learn more about you and, and consume more of your content? Yeah, I love that. So I love social media. I mentioned it about a million times. So Instagram, I'm at Barb Betts. Follow me over there. I I love talking about relationships and business. And I also have a podcast, Relationships Are Your Superpower, where we talk about relationships with ourselves, relationships with others, and relationships in business. So we'd love for you to go catch that. And just to finalize, everyone's wondering, what's your favorite kind of wine? Oh, cab. I'm a cab girl. <laughs> Austin Hope to be specific. Austin Hope cab is my, is my jam. Excellent. Excellent. I'm a Carmenere, which is very special, Ooh. but I also love a good dry Riesling. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. See, I know what's going to go in my relationship management system now. <laughs> Hey, I'm not shy. I should just start putting that on every day's Instagram story and hope you a case should. shows up. <laughs> because on a side note, normally I also teach when you need to reward somebody or thank somebody or appreciate somebody, give them something that they actually love. So dry Riesling might show up to Shannon's doorstep. Exactly. There you go. But it's also, it's just a fun little thing and a nice little touch to have people remember something little that you said, because it goes a long way because it makes you a little bit more exceptional. So I love that. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining me today, Barb. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Shannon. Okay. Real talk. Our business can really mess with our emotions and our mindset. Am I right? One day we feel like we're unstoppable, like we could run through a wall. And then the next we want to burn it all down and start from scratch. Hey, I'm with you. A lot of this has to do with how we approach our money. And if you need a quick jolt of mindset habits for the next five days to help you reboot and recalibrate, check out my five-day financial mindset refresh delivered straight to your email. Click the link in the show notes to sign up right now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.